Fred, it made absolutely zero sense. I had no idea what you're talking about. I'm just like, uh, do you want to do a video on Adventuring Day? Yes, absolutely. What's that? Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And today I thought I would bring along a guest and talk about this topic because he's actually going to throw a lot of light on the topic that other people would probably not completely understand. He doesn't realize this, but I know he does. Hi, Wally. How's it going? Very good. I'm feeling like an expert in the field already. I can't wait to get this started. So the topic for today is the adventuring day for Dungeons & Dragons or Dungeons & Dragons 5.5 in particular. We're talking about the, the current version of the game. And the adventuring day has been roaming around on the internet for quite some time. If you're not really specifically um, familiar with it, it's the typical adventuring party day that you would have in Dungeons & Dragons 5e. And it assumes that your party will have between six and eight combat encounters before they take a long rest. Yes, wow. six to eight combat encounters before a long rest. And on top of that, that they will take at least two short rests before the long rest. Wow. That, that's that's so, a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a question, Wally, and then okay. I want you to just answer it. I sure. didn't specifically put in the email, but I know you will know what to do with it. Okay, absolutely. I'm ready. Wally, when I talked to you about the adventuring day in Dungeons and Dragons, did you have any idea what the heck I was talking about? Did it make any sense to you at all? Fred, it made absolutely zero sense. I had no idea what you're talking about. I just like, uh, do you want to do a video on adventuring day? Yes, absolutely. What's that? The Adventuring Day sort of assumes that a Dungeon Master will look in the Dungeon Master's Guide and look at the section on the Adventuring Day and also experience point budgets. There's like a budget that you use to help plan out your Adventuring Day in some way. And you can find that information on page 84 and 85 of the Dungeon Master's Guide. There's a lot of detail there, gives you down. It's like a great huge formula and there's a lot of maths involved. Uh, but uh, essentially, it gives you a huge amount of guidance around that. What I thought was more interesting as a topic is, does anybody actually use this guide at all? Because I don't use it in my own games. And I don't think I've ever tried to use it in any of the games I've run, including going back to Dungeons & Dragons 2nd um, Edition or Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 3.5, Never really tried to do anything with that. Didn't really attempt it at four. And I've never even gone near it with uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5e. So I was kind of wondering, Wally, do you use anything like this? That sounds like we're counting calories for monsters or something. I have never used anything like this. Um, but truth be told, I haven't used experience points in, in like like 20 years anyway so yeah th this was bizarre a after you sent me the email I, I went and looked at it and just like okay this is a lot of math this is a lot of this is yeah i have no idea but yeah i i've never used it never never ever since i've never used it in dungeons and dragons ever any version of the game i've ever run um i would check on my youtube channel since i got to an argument with people about it um started with a discussion went to an argument and I did a, a poll and I asked people, how many combat encounters do you run before you have a long rest with your group? And the vast majority, about 70%, said about two or three combat encounters before a long rest. 10% said only one combat encounter before a long rest. <laughs> now that I could definitely believe. Yes. And the rest of them uh, were like 2%. There was like hardly anybody in any of the other areas and anybody who said yes i use six to eight like two percent of the people who answered said yes that's what i do and then gave me instructions and advice on how to do it down in the comment section so <laughs> i was like oh, okay so I, I did a bit of research 
did you know, Wally, that none of the Dungeons and Dragons designers use the Adventuring Day guidelines? <laughs> I didn't know that, um, but it wouldn't surprise me after reading through it. I wouldn't want to use it either. <laughs> so the designers created it, put it in a book, and they don't use it. What I thought was even more interesting is you look at the <laughs> you look at the um, pre-made adventures, and they don't use it in the pre-made adventures either. Mm -hmm. A lot of dungeon masters don't even know it exists. So I decided to do a bit of research on the Dungeons and Dragons Adventuring Day to figure out what the heck was going on, since this is something that most people don't seem to use. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered is the discussions about the five minute and the 15 minute adventuring day being too short and how to solve that problem. It's a debate that's been going on for years, but that debate is a product of a particular company taking over Dungeons and Dragons. They actually started with Wizards of the Coast back when Dungeons and Dragons version three was released, 3.5, version four, and now uh, five. So it's actually a new development and how did that happen? Apparently, the Wizards of the Coast team and the people who were designing the game back then took the game in a completely different direction. They changed the game and the assumptions around the game. Because you'll tell me if I'm wrong, Wally, mm -hmm. but when you were playing older versions of the game, the idea was that you explored, you solved problems, and you probably had one tough fight and then you took a rest. I would say so. Um, for me, though, personally, because I played a lot more basic in first edition, we were hack and slash. I mean, that was, you know, I, I was a teenager at the time and it was basically we did a dungeon map and I filled it through with a bunch of monsters from my random encounters tables. And we just went through and, and we went encounter after encounter after encounter. But we didn't have no extended calculation of how many was supposed to be there. Once they were bloodied up to the point where, like, we need to take a break, then I'd let their characters rest. But, I mean, there's no formula to it. It was just, they just handled as much as I could dish out. And then once they've had enough, they're like, okay, you know. And then I'd surprise them with a wandering monster. And I think your approach is actually what most people do. Because you can you imagine what the game would be like if you had to be able to, had to work to that guide? It would be very, very difficult to actually achieve, I feel. That section of the DMG, that page, and reading through it, it's like it's almost in the wrong game. Like it's supposed to be in a different game, and they accidentally s snuck it into 5e. It was just, it's just that bizarre and out of whack to me. So what does the Adventuring Day assume? So I sat down, and I came up with a whole lot of different things that I, that I thought were assumptions based on doing this sort of mathematical thing, equation, you might say, giving this very strict guideline, and it is pretty strict. So the first one I thought, well, it's assuming that combats are fair and balanced. So this Adventuring Day certainly seems to have a focus on combat rather than the other aspects of the game. Now, Dungeons & Dragons 5e says there are three pillars to the game, but their measurement doesn't seem to be, with regarding the Adventuring Day, doesn't seem to include the time taken to do exploring and solving problems or puzzles. And that's your area of expertise, right? Mm -hmm. okay. um, or even dealing with a trap. Those parts of your adventuring day actually take quite a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And yet that doesn't seem to be built into the concept of dealing with it. It's only focusing on combat. What do you think? Yeah, I I am totally not into this whatsoever. And, it, and even role-playing. I mean, a lot of my games as opposed to when I used to play 30 years ago, where it was more hack and slash. Now most of my games are role-playing. So you've, you've got the role-playing, the puzzles, the traps. None of this is going towards, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, they have like that experience point total before you take the long rest. None of that's calculated in, and I just don't see anyone wanting to put all of this combat. I mean, it, a lot of folks do like combat. I, I love combat in 5e, but, you know, I don't want to eat it seven days a week. I mean, I want some other other stuff in there. And it doesn't seem like the adventuring day with regards to getting that experience point fulfillment that you're supposed to meet or this requirement. It just doesn't, it, it, it almost seems impossible to me. It probably assumes that players' behavior is going to allow for you to run between six and eight fights before they take a long rest. 
Now, I've never got my players to ever do anything like that. They want to take a long rest after every single fight if they can. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Have you ever been able to get any of your players to actually uh, take a long rest after six to eight fights? Uh, not at all. Uh, usually one or two and they're ready. Like, well, we go back to the inn. I'm like, it's noon. What are you doing? <laughs> That's okay. We, 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 we'll check on that tomorrow. It'll be fine. And then I also thought, well, even if I got the players to actually follow those instructions or didn't allow them to take a long rest and got the hammer out and whacked it on the table and said, no, you can't take a long rest until you've had six or eight fights. As a dungeon master, how do I structure an adventure to follow a strict six to eight combats before resting? I don't know how I would do that. It would be like a running fight or battle. So I've never been able to figure out how to do anything like that. No. Uh, and I, I try to give it the benefit of the doubt. I, I, was, I was just like, well, is it just for a long rest? So, I mean, could it go days? I mean, maybe like there's like four or five days in this adventuring days where day is just like a, a term they use. I mean, because that's the only way I, I could see six to eight, advent, uh, six, eight combat encounters, unless you're dungeon crawling, of course. I mean, if you're playing, um, you know, Dungeon of the Mad Mage or something, I guess you could f fulfill that. But um, outside of that, I just... I, yeah, I, I don't get it. So I'm actually running Dungeon of the Mad Mage with my players, and there's no way they're going to do six to eight fights. S still they, not. Okay. No, two or three, and they're like, they're spent. And like, no, we're going for a long rest. And then, of course, they rest in the wrong place, and then I wind up with wandering monsters to show up, and then they decide <laughs> they should go somewhere else. I think that this is really targeted at video game play. Dungeons yeah. and Dragons in terms of video game play, that looking at the game uh, in a more modern way, which is viewing it as a tactical war game, which I'm pretty sure Gary actually said on many occasions, Gary Gygax said, mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons is not a tabletop tactical war game. If you want to play that, there are other games that do that far better than Dungeons and Dragons. This is a different type of game. Mm -hmm. And the modern Dungeons and Dragons players are assumed the thing they want out of the game is combat that that's the measurement of what they want from Dungeons and Dragons. It definitely assumes that combat uh, is going to be structured around challenge rating and that challenge rating actually works. Mm -hmm. Have you ever got challenge rating to actually work for you? Because I never have. Mm -mm. No, that, that section in the Monster Manual in the stat block, challenge rating... No, I don't. I don't even look at it. Don't use it. Don't look at it. I kind of just read through what the monster can do. Like, yeah, that sounds fun. Here we go. <laughs> so the other thing I was looking at this and I was thinking, wow, why, why did they do this? Why do they make such a big change? And I think that the Wizards of the Coast designers and marketers thought that the only thing they could really sell from the game since there was a drop off in the popularity of the game because the game very much focused on exploration, solving problems, and combat. Mm -hmm. um, and you would generally not engage in a lot of combat because combat was dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. You had to be very careful about what you were doing there. Um, and I think they decided that they could only sell the combat side of the game back when they designed um, 3.5 or version 3, rather than the exploration and the problem-solving side of the game you know, they also probably assumed that Dungeon Masters would have enough control over the entire game that the outcomes at every stage, they could actually make that work. It's like it's almost as if the players were no longer part of the equation and that they were going to just follow whatever the Dungeon Master had lined up for them. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the, the point to this whole thing is what should you use? And for me... I think you should definitely not use this part of Dungeons and Dragons 5e because I don't think it's actually useful to you in the slightest. No. Um, I think what is more useful to you is to look at what your adventuring day should actually look like. And it's got nothing to do with mathematics, nothing to do with experience points because I don't use experience points either. And there's so many people using milestones. Mm -hmm. Your adventuring day is as long as your adventuring day is going to be for me. And um, probably the natural point when you think about real combat is one tough fight and then you have to rest. And hopefully you did something else before you had your fight. Otherwise, 
you're not going to be doing an awful lot that particular day. You might be sitting around playing a lot of songs, telling a lot of stories, eating a lot of food, right. getting fat, stuff like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and I'm with you as well. I don't even use experience points. So I, I would not recommend the adventuring day. I wouldn't use the adventuring day. I, I wouldn't even recommend using experience points, but that's another topic for another day. But um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> for me, my adventuring day consists of exploration. So I count that. I count the social interaction stuff. Mm. I count any problem solving they might do. I don't have a lot of puzzles in my games because my players don't really like puzzles that much. Mm. I think they find them too hard. But they have different problems to solve that aren't necessarily in a puzzle form. They just don't realize they are problems to solve. In terms of combat, well, they take a rest when they take a rest. They decide to take a rest at a certain point. As long as they do it in a, a, a good location, which is safe, I don't really care. I think the natural point is probably one good solid combat and then you take a rest yeah that's what the players are going to do that's that's actually your benchmark isn't it yeah rather than all this other stuff because as a dungeon master you don't actually control that now as far as my adventuring day goes my my players usually go off in their own direction anyway so anything that i would have had planned is going to get thrown out the window to begin with for them to go through and to expect a lot of combat or whatever else or when to take a long rest it's all just going to be improv and as far as like leveling and things of that nature i've pretty much already decided when they're going to level and that's going to be after you know important parts of the story or you know when it's been a, a number of sessions or things of that nature and being able to fulfill that experience point component or requirements within an adventuring days just wouldn't even make sense or uh, wouldn't even um, it, it, it wouldn't even make a difference please when it comes to Wally DM and how to D&D &D, my channel um, please subscribe hit the bell button turn on notifications like all the videos if you like them I would prefer you to like them rather than not to like them um, if you want to support us you can do that through our affiliate links a patreon um, I'm pretty sure that I have a merchandise shelf and that Wally is working on his very, very, very soon mm -hmm. so that he can actually sell merch because I know there'll be a bunch of people who want merch from him. Otherwise, just watch our videos. That's 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 the, one of the best things to do. Mm -hmm. We know we're doing something right if you're watching our videos. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Here, here's a little secret. As far as my campaigns go, I don't actually put a puzzle in every game it is my puzzles in my campaign are actually far and few in between because i only put them in there if it makes sense uh, 